Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Simone here, and today I'm gonna be doing my July wrap up. As you all know, July was my birthday month, and I think it was a good luck thing because I actually had the best reading month of the year so far in July, and I had a great time reading. Um, oh, I just realized AJ's given me the, his cup. I'm out of his, but you know. There we are. He's given me his cup, there we are. So. Anyhow, um, I read 18 books in the month of July and I had a thoroughly great time reading. Um, I'll give you some stats. I read 4,563 pages and my average rating was 3.625, which is pretty normal for me. Um, it's generally 3 point something. 3.6 is good, pretty high though, better than the month before, so we'll take it. Of those books, 12 of them I read physical, um, five books, five were ebooks, and one was an audio book. And I and I read 15 adult books and three YA books. Genre-wise, I read three classics, three historical, two contemporary, two non-fiction, one fantasy, one horror, one humour, one magical realism, one mystery, one paranormal, one sci-fi and one thriller. So I had a complete mix of different things that I read in July. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's probably been my favourite reading month of reading so far. So let's get started with the books that I read. Okay, so the first book that I read in July was Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. As you all know, this was part of my July TBR, um, as in my wheel chooses my TBR. This was the first book. And I read this one, and I also read it as part of Jane Austen July. And I ended up giving this one a four star. I thoroughly enjoyed the read. I really, really enjoyed it. I would say I enjoyed this one more than Sense and Sensibility. Um, but probably less than Mansfield Park and Emma. Um, around the same amount, I guess, as Pride and Prejudice. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on it and where it would sit. This follows a girl named Catherine Morland, who has a very active imagination. And she um, is really into reading. She's into kind of gothic novels. And um, she is entering into the fashionable social scene in Bath and it's about what happens when her kind of like overactive imagination because of the books that she's read um, kind of lead her into a bit of trouble and a little bit of like some embarrassing situations and I loved this honestly. Catherine was just a really funny character and I think she, I, I definitely relate to her the most out of all of Jane Austen's characters. Um, and I think, yeah, it was just a really fun read. It definitely wasn't my favourite in terms of like, a lot of Jane Austen's books I find quite easy to read, whereas I think this one was a little bit more um, like difficult, but not like, in, it wasn't, it still wasn't a difficult read. It was definitely just a little bit more perhaps um, the way it was worded and stuff. However, it also may be to do with the fact that I don't really know the story of this, whereas the others I've kind of known the story of before I've gone in to the book so I think that could possibly be what it's about but anyway this was a four star read for me and a great start to the month. Next up I read The Shining by Stephen King. This was the next book in the King Along that I'm doing which I will link the announcement down below for you but I'm basically reading uh, I'm reading Stephen King's um, books in order that they were published. Um, I was doing them one a month but I've now decided to be a little less strict on myself and I'm just kind of doing them as I get to the next one um, and yeah I thoroughly enjoyed this read. This was a four star read for me um, and I listened to this one on audiobook and the reason I think I enjoyed it was because of the audiobook and me reading it physically. I read this once before and I gave this I think a two or a three star. I didn't love it um, and then I started reading this one last month and in my June wrap up you have seen I actually DNF'd it after 180 pages and that was me physically reading it uh, so that was me reading it on my Kindle I picked up a physical copy and decided to listen to the audiobook and it was a completely different reading experience for me I absolutely loved it um, this follows a young boy named Danny whose um, dad is has now become the caretaker for the overreach hotel Overlook Hotel, sorry, and um, they've essentially gone to the Overlook Hotel over the winter period where they all get snowed in and that's kind of the point of the job is that they'll look after the hotel while they can't go anywhere else and things start to happen and it's kind of ghostly and creepy and um, just downright terrifying if I'm honest um, but yeah this was really really good and definitely a four star read. Next up was my first DNF, I actually DNF two books in um, 
in July. Uh, the first one was Sourdough by Robin Sloan. This was a very strange book and this was the magical realism book that I mentioned and I think magical realism just isn't really my thing. This basically follows a girl who um, this follows a girl who works for a company where basically she is um, kind of um, organized and kept in line she's very much controlled by this company and essentially what happens in a very roundabout way is she her one way of getting out of this is or having a little bit more of control is that she can choose what she eats and she orders this food um, from this place and this sourdough bread comes to her door and she falls in love with it and then the, the people that make the bread suddenly go away and leave her the recipe um, but this bread like sings to her and it's a very strange book I think I did <laughs> Adrian's face it's like what um yeah it's about her trying to basically raise this bread while it sings to her and yeah it's a very it's just very odd I don't really know how to explain it it's supposed to be quite like I don't know there's just it's very odd and it just really wasn't for me I think if you like magical realism and you like literary fiction you'd probably enjoy this but I'm yeah it really wasn't for me so I ended up DNFing it after actually I can tell you after 58 pages next up I read a little short book and this was The Breakthrough by Daphne du Maurier this is one of the Penguin Modern Classics this is number three um and this is about um a scientist who um, they're doing kind of experiments and they're trying to figure out if they can, if somebody can be alive in conscience while, um, alive in conscious, uh, while, when their body has died and whether they can like move that across. And again, this is like a 50 page book. It was really, really quick. This was a three star for me. I didn't totally understand what the point of it was. Um, and I really liked Daphne du Maurier and I felt like this was so different than anything she did, like that anything else I read by her. So it wasn't my favorite. I didn't really have that gothic feel to it, which I feel like is what I love most about her book. So yeah, it was fine. It was so, like it was interesting. I read through it and it, you know, I didn't lose interest in it, but yeah, it was kind of odd. Next up, I read The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. This one was kindly gifted to me by Mary from Mary Among Stories uh, for Christmas. So a massive thank you to Mary because I always love to get gifts and it was such a lovely gift to get. Um, however, I really didn't like this book. Um, I gave this one a two star and I think this is definitely a book that has a lot of hype on booktube. Um, and I feel like a lot of people talk about this one, but it really... Mm, I was let down by this I think mainly because so basically this follows um a group of friends I think there's five of them it's either four or five I can't remember um who um all hang around and they start to draw chalk men on the floor um to like to leave messages for each other outside each other's houses so they've each got a different color and they will for example I don't know say my color was blue um and I would leave a message outside my friend's house saying like come to the park and it would mean that if I you know he saw that message he would go to the park and we would play in the park um and it's kind of got that so one and then what happens is they um there is suddenly white chalk men drawn around and it leads them to a body and the body is that of somebody they know and it goes from there now this book is told in different perspective so it's told in two different timelines so the first timeline is before any of this happens and the second is like 30 years later with the main character looking back on what happened and the reason one of the reasons I didn't like this is because I felt like and I've heard people compare this to Stephen King in fact Stephen King is even um like blurbed this book it says if you like my stuff you'll like this and I agree that that could be the case but that's because for me I felt like this was a complete rip-off of Stephen King Um, it felt very much like it mixed with like The Shining I felt like that was definitely what it was the characters were even like called the same thing Um, one of the characters in um, in this was called Mr Halloran which is one of the main characters in The Shining Um, and then this obviously has like the group of kids and um, going back 30 years and I felt like that was very much it and it just there was even like a girl in this it was like the only girl in her group and you know I just I don't know this felt so like copycat that I just couldn't enjoy it um on top of that the ending of this was incredibly strange 
I did not like the ending. I, I really didn't. And then the very last... I, no, so it's not the last paragraph, but it's literally the last two pages are the most ridiculous thing. And I, yeah, didn't like it at all. Massively overhyped a book, in my opinion. And yeah, I will definitely try more CJ Tudor, but I just felt for me this was this was a bit of a yeah let down next up was another book that i dnf'd and the second dnf of the month and this was degrees of difference by kimberly d mckee and denise a delgado this um i dnf'd this one after 46 pages mainly because this book really isn't intended for me this was a book that i actually received on netgalley and it is a book about the black experience um in um kind of college and um, university in America and it talks about it's very scientific and it's very much based on um, people who are in academia so it talks very specifically about kind of the American college and American university system and so I didn't really understand the nuances because it's not something that I'd ever experienced it wasn't like they were explaining it it was almost they it was obviously as if you would should already know it and it's because obviously it's, it's a system that I would guess that most Americans or you know people in university over there do know but as somebody who is from the UK and has absolutely no idea about the American school system um, it, yeah I found it very confusing I definitely would want to read something that's a bit more kind of um, maybe like beginner friendly um, in that kind of situation because I think it's really interesting to talk about like um, degrees um, and um, how you know discrimination happens and I think it's definitely an important topic to open um, and talk about but yeah for me I thought that this book just really wasn't I wasn't the targeted audience for this book um, in terms of the American market so yeah for me I didn't enjoy it and DNF'd it because I just couldn't get my head around it but it's definitely interesting and I think if you are American um, you probably will get a lot from this one. Next up I read When God Was a Rabbit by uh, Sarah Winman. This is a very Again, I had a very strange reading month because I read a lot of strange books. I honestly, thinking back on, I gave this one, a, I um, gave this one a three stars at the time of um, like rating this one. But looking back on it, it's probably more a two star because I genuinely couldn't even tell you what really happened in this book, apart from the fact that they had a rabbit that was called God, and it talked a lot about her friend who was in prison. And yeah, I'm not really sure. There's a lot of very sensationalist things in here, but I really didn't like it. I think I'm actually going to put this back down to a two star because I just couldn't get my head around it. I own another Sarah Winman book. Um, I think it's Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Yeah, I think I've made that joke before on this channel. Um, but yeah, it's not... This definitely wasn't for me. Uh, and I think the writing style is just... Yeah, it's very literary fiction. And yeah, I think I would pass... Mm, I don't know I def I think I'd give the other one a go but if I don't like it then I'm gonna give up with Sarah Women I'm afraid. Next up is a book that I buddy read with Leanne and with Victoria. Victoria from What Victoria Read and Leanne from Literary Diversions and that was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid and I was skeptical about this one to begin with. I wasn't really sure how much of the hype I was gonna kind of believe in um this follows a girl named daisy jones who um becomes she sings with the six who is a popular band um and they suddenly become a sensation and this is the story of the right their rise to fame um and then all you know is that on the 12th of July 1979 Daisy Jones and the six split up and nobody knows the reason why um and this is kind of um a journalist who is looking back um, and has kind of has written in like um, interview form I guess um, their lives them talking about what happened and it's really interesting to get different perspectives on each thing and it's really fun to hear from each of the different characters this is a book that only has um, speech so there's no actual um, like description or anything in this and so at the start it did feel like it was a bit difficult to kind of understand exactly where we were going but this was so well done this was a hundred percent a five out of five star read i absolutely loved this one and i honestly i'm so excited that i read this one um i adored it and yeah i'm really looking forward to you i have um one of taylor jenkins reads other books um i think it's the seven what is it called the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which now I'm really, really intrigued by because she does a character study very, very well. This was heartbreaking in so many places, but it was just so wonderfully done that I just cared about all the characters. And yeah, I loved this book. It was definitely a five star. 
Next up is a book that um, is super, super short, um, but it's very impactful. And this is A Dress Unknown by Catherine Cressman Taylor. And I read this one in probably like an hour. It is, I think, it's like 70 pages and it's told completely in letter form. Um, this follows, um, it's set around the Holocaust and set around, um, it's a set of letters between um, a Jewish man in America and his German friend and that is all I will say I'm not going to say anything else this book honestly made me gasp out loud I was shocked this is so wonderful and so well done um, it's definitely not a book I've heard anyone talk about and I think that's because it's quite a niche book but I feel like if you enjoy that kind of thing and you really want to um, have like your heartstrings pulled on you definitely need to read this one Next up, I read um, Shepherd by Catherine Jinks on my Kindle, and this was a really surprising read. This one I ended up giving a three star. This was an arc that I was sent, so again, a massive thank you to the publisher for sending me this one, and this was via NetGalley. Um, this follows um, a man named, I think it's Tom, or was it Tim? It's one of the two. Um, and he basically um, has, is a criminal who's been convicted, and um, I think this is set in Australia and um basically what's happened is when the crim when they are criminal when they have been accused of crime and they've been convicted they essentially get um sent to this sheep farm in the middle of nowhere and they have to um work for their living i guess and they have to um work on these really difficult conditions and with very little food and whatever and this follows this man who is um looking after these sheep he is um tending them with um he's got dogs and everything um along with a few other people that they all work live together and um basically um one one of the criminals essentially comes back and is trying to attack them and it's about what happens next this is so interesting again this was very much out of my comfort zone initially this isn't something i would normally read but i absolutely loved this um up until kind of the halfway point i think the introduction was really really well done um and then it just got to be a bit gratuitous violence for no real reason and i didn't love the ending i think there was a lot of inner monologues that were happening which i found fascinating but then like what actually happened was yeah it was odd it was definitely a three star read it was definitely something i would recommend if you enjoy kind of slow burn historical um with a lot of violence um but yeah go into it if you're going to read it definitely go into it with that in mind Next up, Trigger Publishing sent me an arc of um, Great Expectations by Gemma Cribb and James Findlay. This is a kind of almost like self-help book, but it essentially um, is, talks about sex. So it very much is, is um, talks about kind of um, the expectations that have been put on sex in our modern day lives and also um, the kind of prejudices that we all have like things that we automatically think about sex whether that's um you know who initiates it whether that's um who has to um enjoy it the most who has to kind of um you know when it ends at what point in that you know encounter will it you know be over and that kind of thing it was really interesting it was definitely a great interesting read I gave this one a four star. I definitely enjoyed the read and I think it was something that was interesting to look at. I don't know that it really helped me in terms of like, it's not one of those books that you read and think, I will have a much better sex life now. I think it was more like, um, it was kind of an interesting look at um, the dynamics behind it and how other people think about sex as well, which I thought was interesting. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy it. Next up I read The Custard Heart by Dorothy Parker. This again is one of the Penguin Modern Classics. This one is number four. Um, and this one is um, three short stories by Dorothy Parker, each showing the um, darkness uh, behind women's tales in the in history, I guess, in the, in the Jazz Age, I believe. Um, again, I'm not really sure that... Um, I could explain so much what this is about. Um, these were very strange stories and I'm not sure that I would read more Dorothy Parker but I do think that this was really it was a fascinating read and again that's why I like these modern classics so much because you do really get that kind of like snip, snapshot into an author I don't think I'd read like a full length novel by her but I definitely think these short stories were fun um, and something quite interesting and I ended up giving this one a four star Next up, I read Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones um, and I thoroughly enjoyed this read. 
I thoroughly enjoyed this read. I gave this one a four star. This, um, I've seen the movie of Howl's Moving Castle and I will say it's completely different to the book. Like completely different. There's a whole different storyline in this, I think. There's a couple of parts in here that were similar or had were kind of the same but there's a whole like in this one Sophie has so the main character Sophie has like sisters that are quite prominent in it whereas she doesn't um have any real like they're not really in it at all in the in the movie um so this basically follows um a girl named Sophie Hatter who attracts um the was witch of the waste who basically puts a curse on her that she will be she'll look like an old woman and she decides to try and go um she runs away basically to try and get help and she ends up in Howl's Moving Castle which I don't know if it's on here oh yeah so this is Howl's Moving Castle um it is a castle that literally moves around and um yes <laughs> she meets um what's his name I should know it Calcifer who is the um fire demon and she meets the young boy named Michael um and she meets Howl who is a wizard and it's about their story and the things that they do um Howl is known to um be satisfied by the hearts of young girls but obviously Sophie is a um old lady now so she kind of it's about that I guess she becomes his cleaner and it all goes from there it's fascinating I absolutely loved it I really did enjoy the read I think it was really fun again it was a four stars it definitely was a book that just I felt compelled to keep reading um yeah it was a really really cute story and I really enjoy it and I, like I said I do also really enjoy the Studio Ghibli movie um but yeah like I say it was very different next up I got another book from NetGalley and I read I Hate Everything by Robert Lantana this is a book that is kind of like I mentioned recently how much I really like reading books about like people's professions and things like kind of real life things around it and things that they like and things that they don't and this is about Robert Lantana who is a um, secondary school teacher and it's about his day. Now I gave this one a three star and the reason for that was because I didn't love the way that this well one thing I did love about it is the way it was set out so it was set out in a kind of like literal like in a day in the life um and it was it would have it started off with um you know it would start off with like 5 a.m wake up and it would talk about his what he would have like what he would actually be doing in a day in his life and then there would be big chunks where it would be like rants so it would be a rant about something he hates that would happen so it could be um you know uh for example one of them was um that he had to try and teach children who just didn't want to be who didn't want to know for example there's lots of different ones and i enjoyed that part that was absolutely fine and i found it really interesting to see you know the kind of reality of being a secondary school teacher and what that entails and i thought that was really interesting too what i didn't love was the fact that he swears so much in this book now that doesn't normally bother me but it was definitely not necessarily there for kind of actual frustration he swore i think a lot of the time in kind of like to be like oh look at me i can swear um and also there was lots of this where he basically turned around and said um he used this phrase a number of times and that was that he wanted to smack them in the face with a brick um number of times there was lots of different situations different people he wanted to do that to but it was kind of throughout the book and yeah i didn't like that that really annoyed me that was a frustrating thing um yes i was not a fan of that um yeah so it was a three star it would have probably been a four star otherwise but yeah it was a three star because of that next up i read undead and unreturnable by mary janice davidson this is the fourth book in the undead series and i've really really loved my reading of this so far this one was probably my least favorite of the lot so far i think i've given all the others five or four stars this one was a three star for me um i just felt like it wasn't really um Basically this follows Betsy Taylor who is um, a, was a teen, I think she was, um, who died and then she lived again and became the vampire queen. Um, but basically, yeah, so basically all these vampires are coming to her because she's the new queen of the vampires and they are kind of um, expecting her to do their bidding and kind of join in. In this one, um, I can't really say too much because I don't want to spoil the others but this one I think was just a bit too much about the kind of romance side of it and generally I don't mind but it felt like it was very much one-sided um whereas normally there's quite like a vampire element and then a romance element this was very much romance heavy and I enjoy the kind of just the two different sides um I think this one could have been more 
interesting and well done but I did enjoy it still so it was a three star I do own the fifth book as well which I'll probably read like sometime later on this year I imagine but yeah again it was a three star I enjoyed it I didn't love it next up I read one of AJ's books and he was very glad that I read this one this is Halo the Fall of Reach by Eric Nyland and this is the first book in the Halo series I believe there's like 20 books now in fact I just bought book four for AJ because he owned one to three and didn't realize there was any more um so I've just picked up book four for him and this is about a um kind of so halo is a is a video game um and this is the prequel to that so it's about how this how they got to halo which is a kind of um planet that has been made by humans i guess i think um this has um spartans which are bioengineered technically advanced um humans that have been made into these things and um essentially what they're having to do is fight the covenant which is an alien race um who are trying to wipe out humankind um yeah and they're doing that in space and it's it's really interesting it was a fun read it was a three star i think i definitely preferred the first half of this book to the second um because i do think it was quite like um the first part, part was quite fast paced but i really enjoyed them getting to that whereas i think the second half was very much like war and battle terms and kind of um techno like like technical language i guess and so i enjoyed it less um i did still enjoy it though and i definitely would continue on with the series um but yeah it was a three star read and i'm glad that i read it and i know aj is glad i read it too then the penultimate book that i read in july was on the come up on the come up by angie thomas and this was a five star read angie thomas can do no wrong in my eyes this is the second book i read by her i read the hate you give last year and again gave that one a five stars thought it was perfect this follows 16 year old brie who wants to be a rapper her dad law was a um rapper but he was murdered uh he was shot dead by a rival gang um years before and she wants to be this rapper but in order for her to kind of get her come up is what her and her auntie call it um she um has to kind of fight against this stereotypical view that she should be a certain way and she should you know talk a certain way and she should look a certain way um in that she is um she goes to a predominantly white school um and they all have these opinions about her and these thoughts about her so she kind of almost decides to live up to that um by becoming exactly what they want her to be and honestly i sped through this in like two days this was phenomenal this i think i probably i maybe even preferred this to the hate you give very very slightly like as I said, they're both five star reads for me, but I think I there was just something about Brie that I just really, really enjoyed as a character. I thought her mum, Jay, was one of my favourite people. I loved her. Um, and her older brother, I think his name was Trey. Yeah, her older brother, Trey, is also one of my favourites. And I just think their relationship was really lovely. Um, and yeah, I think this was perfect. I think it talks a lot about racism and about, um, you know, white privilege. Um, and people using that against her and yeah just i think it was fantastic um yeah highly highly recommend and then the final book that i read in july was toys by james patterson and neil mcmahon this was a three star read for me i did not love this one this is definitely not my favorite of um james patterson's this is a slightly fantastical dystopian novel i guess um it follows a man named hayes baker who is one of the elites and he is married and has children and the elites are basically um they hate humans and their aim is to kind of like wipe humans out um and and yeah basically so the elites are trying to wipe out the humans um hayes baker is one of the top people in kind of this intelligence um agency of change um and him and his wife are both there um and then something happens which means that he is then on the other side of the gun and he is very much looked upon as um he's very much um trying to now fight to save humans from extinction which is something that he never thought he would do and this was it was interesting it was definitely an interesting concept and i think it was fun to read it wasn't what i was expecting from a james patterson book because obviously i read all of, like the, a lot of his books in the past and i definitely think normally he's very much like set in the real world and this felt very um, dystopian and very kind of different um and i did enjoy it like i said it was a three star read for me though because there was just something about it that just didn't quite ring true and it felt a bit uncomfortable with the way that it was handled um i did enjoy it though i would recommend if you enjoy more kind of dystopian books and um 
yeah this just wasn't my favorite anyway guys that is all of the books that i read in july um i hope that you liked this video um let me know what your favorite book and least favorite book of july was give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next one bye guys